two part in this in this verse that one is men's plan, the other is God's counsel. We all make plans, even from kindergarten, from high school, from teenagers, from adults, retired, we all make plans every day. Kindergartners they plan for the homers, the teenagers they plan their future career, the high schoolers they plan which college that they need to go. We all make plans every day. The retired people make plans. Even we make plans life after death. We all make plans. For example, if, if you want to build a building, for example, this building, we made a plan. We went to an architect and uh, they gave us a plan and we uh, submit our plan to the uh, city uh, planning and zoning commission and they gave necessary adjustment and they gave us the plan. So we make plans every day in our, in our life. One of the richest men who have lived, lived in the earth right currently, he said, a fool with a plan is better than a wise man without any plan. He's talking about Warren Buffett is the man who, who made that statement that a fool with a concerning finances, a fool with a plan is better than a wise man with no plan. So the reason that we are doing that, what we plan matters. Everything that we plan matters. So I would like to bring to your attention for the three characters from the Bible who either try to change or deviate from God's plan or plan against God's will or does not include His uh, God in the planning purpose. So for that, let us read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 and 7. So Amen. Very familiar portion. You may have heard many, many sermons from this portion. But anyway, let me give you a brief background of this situation. During the time, uh, the prophets or the priests were ruling uh, the kingdom of Israel. So the Samuel the prophet, he was ruling the land. He was the supreme authority of the land. So uh, the the people of the land came and approached him and said, your sons are not walking in your ways, so we need their king. So, he, it, was, it was grievous to him, but anyway, God told him, go ahead and give them a king. So he anointed the Lord directed him and gave a king, Saul. He's the first king of Israel. But, long story short, he disobeyed and uh, God removed Saul from the kingship. So in this chapter, in this chapter, we can see God made a plan. See, this is God's plan. If you have to read the entire chapter, and God told him, why are you so grieved? You say, I have found someone else to be the king of Israel. So God made a plan, and God used Samuel to execute the plan. So this is what he is doing. He, God told him, you need to go to Bethlehem, and uh, uh, Find, go to Jesse's house, made a sacrifice. He gave me a detail, God gave me a very detailed plan. We can see that. I, I, I don't have time to read all those. You can go home and read it. God gave me a plan and everything. He said, Go to this place, go to this house, and anoint king. So, God uh, told him, like I said, He gave the clear directions. So, he decided to go to a uh, bed of him. As soon as he entered into the bed of him, the leaders of the, the elders of the land, they were so afraid. Why this man coming to our place? And he said, I'm coming to, uh, to worship God, make a sacrifice. So he invited Jesse's family to, to, uh, for, the, for the sacrifice. He's anointing, he's going to anoint a king from that family. So the, the first son of Jesse walked by. And his name is Eliab. As soon as he saw Eliab, Samuel said, surely this is the man. But that was not the man. As soon as he uttered those words, God sent him in and said, no Samuel, this is not the man that I chose. You look at his appearance. You look at his physical stature, his height, his facial experience, everything. 
But I am not looking at that. I am a person who look at heart. So one thing that I have learned from that, you know, Samuel, even though he was a prophet, he got a lot of experiences, but he's the one who anointed the first king. But he's about to make a mistake right now. So this is the one for us. The two lessons that I learned, one lesson that I learned, that even though you may have a lot of experiences, you may be a prophet, you may be a, a child of God for so many years, there is a possibility that you can deviate from God's plan. Just like we heard from this morning Sunday school, we have to be very careful. There is a chance that we can drift away from God's actual plan. So the second son came, God said, no, I didn't select him. Third son came, so all seven sons came. But God said, no, 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 no. Sam, Samuel is confused right now. And he asked Jesse, do you have any other son? He said, yeah, there's one young, young, young fellow, he's in the field, he's taking care of the sheep. He said, I am, that's the person that I chose. So the second lesson that I, I learned from that, that his own parents forsook, forsook him. He saw, everybody rejected him, but God, God intervened, God made the plan, David to be the king. So that's the second lesson that I have learned, that if God has a plan and purpose in your life, no matter who is against your, your priest, elders, or your parents, that's the worst condition. No matter who rejected you, if God has a plan for your life, He will fulfill the plan in your life. Just like the sound that you heard, the expression from you heard, the nation may rage, the kingdom may move, but we still will know our God is in control. He will fulfill His plan in our life. Amen. So the second, let me move on to the second character from the Bible. That is 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 10. Please read that. 2 Samuel 24, verse 10. And David's heart condemned after him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly for what I have done. But now I pray, O Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Thank you. So this is another plan that David made. David, you know, David is the king of the land. God gave him peace. God gave him victory over many things, many, many war he fought. But one day, he thought, I need to count my people. I need to take a census. That was against God's will. He, he had to read the whole chapter. And his own commander-in-chief, jo, uh, Joab, said, O king, why are you doing this? You don't have to do this. God already gave you victory. Why are you making such a decision? So all the captains intervened and said, King David, don't do this. But because he got the authority, he said, I wanted to do this. So go ahead and start counting people. So it took nine months to make this number of the people. It took them nine months. It's a very, very hard job to counting all these people. Finally, they gave the report. Yeah, you have 800,000 men who can carry the sword. And you have 300,000 mighty men in Judah. So you have a total of 1.3 million people, mighty men, mighty warriors. So he has done this to ease his ego. So he's, he, was, he was so powerful in the land. So he made the decision without confirming with, with God. He said, I want to do this. Later on, the words the word that we read, his heart was condemning him. He, he already made the decision, but the consequences was enormous. If you continue to read that, 70,000 people died because of his planning, because of this wrong decision that he made. So the lesson that I have learned from this period, every decision that you make, please consult with God before you make and implement your decisions. Always, always, always remember, because you may have the power, to do this because you may be the king, you may be a priest, you may be a prophet, but consult with God with fear. The consequences may be enormous. Let me move on to the third person. Luke chapter 12, verse 17 to 19. I will pull down my barns and build a greater. There I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will save my soul, 
So a little bit just laid up for many years. Take your keys, eat, drink, and be married. Here is a man, a rich man. He made a plan, very good plan. We all do the same. You know, he was a rich. You know, back in the days, if you have a good harvest, there's a good crop, that he's, he's, he's a multi-millionaire. Imagine uh, Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett or Bill Gates decided to put $100 million in your account. That's what happened to this man. He's already rich and he got a great harvest. So what did he do? He made a plan. Very good plan. We all, we, we are all exempt from this. If we have a lot of money in our hands, we will do a planning. This is, look what he did. He said, what shall I do? I have no room. I will do this. I will store. I will say to my store. So he, he said, six eyes. You know, I'm going to call this man Mr. iPlan. I thought this iPlan of uh, the software just came out. But this happened a long time ago. He made, I will, I will do. This is what I'm going to do. So he made six eyes in his plan. And we have a lot of iPhone, iPad, iPad, iPod, it is operating system iOS, and we have iWatch, everything. But this is a man called iPlan. He planned everything. But one factor is missing in that plan. What is that? We can see that in James chapter 4, verse 15. This is what we are today. If God allowed, I will do this or that. He forgot to mention <coughs> God's name. He, all, he said, because he got the money, he's a rich man, he decided to do everything by his own. There is, there is no way he can find God in that equation. But look what God said. But God said to him, You fool. I'm the one who gave you life. If I take that life back tonight, what are you going to do with all the money that you have? Think about it. There was, he never mentioned God in his planning. But God intervened and said, if you die tonight, what is going to happen to all the wealth that you have, all the money that you have in the bank? So, Psalms verse 20 verse 4 said, God will grant you according to your heart's desire, plan and fulfill all your purposes. Philippians 2 13 said, it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So in conclusion I wanted to tell you, there's three lessons that I have learned from this. Don't try to change God's plan. Samuel even though he was a prophet, he was ruling the land for many years. But even though he heard the voice there before, but he looked at the appearance. Same way, he did the same thing. And especially when he chose a life path, a partner for our life for our children. He looked at the physical appearances, he looked at the color of skin, he looked at education, he looked at all these things. Which is not bad. He should do that. But don't try to change God's plan. God is looking, God's perspective is entirely different than our human perspective. Remember that. Number two, don't make a plan without consulting God. Any plan that you make, don't make the mistake like David made. Always consult with God before you make any plan. Number three, don't be an eye plan. Just like the rich man, he was an eye plan. You have to have an eternal purpose in your planning. You have to understand that our life is very short in this, in this world. No matter how much money you have, how much education that you have, you have to be, must have an eternal perspective in everything, in anything that we do. May God bless you. Thank you. Let's think about it for a moment and see when we make our plans and we have to make plans and that's demanded of us, that's required of us. So before we make plans, ask God what's the best plan. I can make my own plans with the resources I have, but God, ask the Lord, Lord help me to make the right decision.